want to talk about in this video is two queen hives, which is hopefully something that most of you will have heard of before. So we have a two box hive with a queen excluder and one queen below the excluder and one queen above. Now, why would you want to have a two queen hive? It's because they usually collect about 30 times, 30% 30 more honey than a single queen colony. So you get a quite a big benefit out of it. And we did a trial in New Zealand about 50 years ago now, where they got two big outfits to try double queening a whole lot of hives. And in both outfits, they got quite a significant increase in honey production by doing it. Unfortunately, the next year for both of those businesses was one of those years we get in New Zealand where suddenly there's no honey anywhere. And we haven't had one of those for quite a while now, but they do happen where bees can starve to death in January and February because there's nothing. And then the second year, the two queen hives, because they had a whole lot more bees, had to be fed a whole lot more. So it um, suddenly became unpopular to do it. If the second year had been another good year, I think every hive in New Zealand now would be double queened. We just, um, it never got the traction it needed to. So two queen hives, and we know from in New Zealand and worldwide, as long as there's a honey flow, collect much more honey than a colony with just one queen because they have more bees in them and more brood. The timing is an issue. It doesn't work so well for crops that are very early. So if you've got a very early Manuka crop, the two queen hive is probably not going to get up to its full strength before the crop. By the same token, um, colonies with a single queen will have exactly the same problem in those early crops. But certainly any crops that flower middle of October onwards, a two queen hive, if you set it up early enough, can give you much more, much larger brood areas, a whole lot more bees and a whole lot more honey. So how to do it? Um, one way you can do it is by doing it as part of your annual requeening. And the advantage is you don't actually have to find a queen to do it. All you do is take a box, put it above an excluder and take three frames of brood, shake all the bees off and put it in the box above the excluder. Um, the bees will walk through it and then you know that the queen, to cover the brood, you know the, the old queen's in the bottom, you've got a box on the top that is queenless now, so you can put your new queen in. At some stage, you'll want to swap the boxes around. If you're putting, if you're putting um, two new queens in, you're queening everything, including the old queens, you can do it by, in that case, you're gonna to have to find one queen, <laughs> but, and then put them both in. The third thing you can do, and it's something that I've done quite often, is use it as part of my requeening with cells. So I'd make that, uh, that top up with some frames of brood covered with bees, put a division board in, and then a cell in. Once it's mated, I would remove the uh, division board, put them back, the excluder back in with newspaper to get them to combine, and then swap the boxes around so that the new queen was down the bottom and the top queen was above. One extra added advantage of two queen hives is that you end up with most of your hives with two queens, You'll still get some because it didn't work with one queen, but you very, very, very seldom have a queenless hive. If you're starting with one queen, then it's quite common to end up with a queenless hive. When you go to take your honey boxes off, what, tip, what normally happens is the bees have filled up that second box with honey right down on top of the excluder. And the, either the old queen that you had up there is either not there at all, she's just walking around on top of the excluder, or she might have just a little patch of brood that she's still looking at. So you can still use her for something else if you want to, um, or you can just kill her at that stage. So I guess for our two queens, some do's and don'ts, and you probably, the important thing is not try to do it all too quickly. So that if you're setting up a two queen hive, so you've got a queen down the bottom and a queen up above, to start off with, have a division board between them. So effectively you're making it into two colonies, and only combine them when your new queen that you've added actually has a reasonable amount of brood. So probably about three weeks after you set it up, you can take the division board out, put a queen excluder and a sheet of newspaper in between. If you try to do it all at the same time, say you've got a caged queen and you put that above the excluder and have the old queen down below, down the bottom, when you come back, the new queen will probably be missing. They can attack each other during the, um, through the queen excluder. 
Alternatively, there's a piece of equipment they use overseas that we have, don't see in New Zealand, but it's really having two queen excluders separated by about five, five mil. And what it means is the queens can't sting themselves or attack themselves through the queen excluder. If you've got that, you can probably requeen them and do it all just in one visit. But with all of these things, if it's something you've not done before, what we suggest is just try it on a few hives, either with the double excluder or with the division board to make sure that it's going to work before you go and roll it out across a thousand hives. So in summary, double queening, we, it's, it's pretty guaranteed to increase honey production as long as you do it properly and, and your crop's not too early for it. You want a later crop so your colonies get, a, get to their maximum size. And what I suggest everybody does is just try it on a couple of half apries. Just to prove to yourself that it's beneficial before you try and expand and do your whole outfit with it. So in summary, double queens is great. Um, as long as you get the timing right, you can use it as part of your requeening, so you never you can do your whole requeening with never having to find a queen. And at the end, you're in at least with more honey, and quite often you have a surplus queen at the end that you can either kill or do something else with if you want to over to keep it over the winter.